I am not going to like start a junk journaling channel, but I did want to show you, those of you who might be interested, how I use some of my thrifted finds when I junk journal. So you might have seen in a thrift haul, it was from the bins about mm, early July that I got two Funk and Wagnalls encyclopedias. And I said I wanted to use one for junk journaling and one, I don't know, just keep because I thought it was cool. So the one I'm going to use for junk journaling is this one. So this started out as an encyclopedia. And I don't have a problem cutting up old books. Some of you might, and I understand that, but you know, to each his own. So what I did first was I just cut out the text block. This is called the text block, cut that out. And then I'm going to use some pictures from the encyclopedia to decorate my junk journal, but I didn't want to just have pages and pages. You can actually make a journal from a book and you like cut chunks of pages out. I didn't want to do that, but I do, I will be using some of the pictures so you can see kind of some of the vintage pictures and things about the U.S. I thought were cool. So those will be included just to kind of, you know, bring some of the original history of this book cover to my junk journal. So then what I did, so I really liked the inside of the Funk and Wagnalls books. So when I actually cut the cover off, this was the front of the book, but I really liked this paper and I wanted this to be the front of my journal. So to do that, I just covered, so this was, um, it's drying right now, but I covered um, the inside spine with white duct tape and then glued um, some of some lace scraps. They're not lace. Someone told me they were like Victorian something or others. I don't remember. I have a ton of them. So I covered the white duct tape with those and that will look nice once it dries. And then in here, I also duct tape to reinforce the binding of, you know, the spine. And then I covered that with a piece of vintage fabric that you saw me it, you didn't see me pick it up, but I showed you that I picked up a bunch of fabric scraps from a yard sale that I went to with Molly and Chris, um, also in early July. So that's what that is here. I really wanted to still show the Funk and Wagnalls um, emblem, so I didn't want to cover that. This um, cover was a little messy, like, you know, it's an old book. It has grease spots and things on it. So I just covered that with some paper and then I left this out. You can kind of see it's just a little messy. Um, that's fine. I'm not too worried about it. But then I, I also had this. This is all scrap paper that I put, picked up at the Goodwill outlet bins. So now um, I have my cover for my journal. Obviously, I'll decorate this a little bit. I'm not going to completely cover it, though, because I think that is so pretty. I really like the inside paper. Here is where I'm at with my journal. This is the cover, which I showed you in another section, segment. And then I worked on the front page. So I think I told you this is my homemaking journal. What that means is that I'm recording meals that I plan. That's the number one thing I wanted to record in here. Not meals that I plan, but like the weekly plan. Because I think instead of having to like reinvent the wheel every week, if I have little cards, then I can like say, oh, what was this week's meal plan? You know, and I can kind of reference back and get ideas instead of always feeling like I'm starting with a blank page <laughs> every week. So that's why I wanted to kind of keep better track of what I plan each week. And that's the inspiration then for this journal. And then I'm also going to have a section, I think, about home projects, things we're working on, things we want to get done, etc. Maybe budgeting for those projects. So I am making this a practical journal. But not all junk journals have to be practical. And that's one thing you have to remember. So I always want it to be kind of a balance between what purpose am I using it for? Sometimes maybe I'm not using it for anything. Maybe it's just an art book. It's a junk book. But this one has a purpose. And then, but within that, I still want to be able to express myself and enjoy the art of it. So that being said, oh, I need to to touch that up looks to be coming loose let's do that right here okay so this is the front cover I did start with the front cover the, the title page or the front page whatever you want to call it sometimes I'll leave that till the end but this time I really knew what I wanted to do so that's why I started here 
And then here I just plan to maybe write a little bit about our home, maybe put our address, which I will not be giving to YouTube. <laughs> but that's what I thought I could write on these little, you know, tags that I've had as like journal boxes or journal tags. And then this one's really cute. It pulls out. See that? And I wrote a quote from Mr. Rogers. It says, love isn't a state of perfect caring. It's an active noun. To love someone is to strive to accept that person or people exactly the way they are right here and now. And that's by Mr. Rogers. And then on the back is just a little quote that says, energy and persistence conquer. And I changed it to many things by Benjamin Franklin. I don't think we can always conquer all things, but we can conquer many things with energy and persistence. So not to get philosophical with you here, but then all of that is contained within this little envelope. This is just an envelope, like for a card. I got a bunch of these from, I think they were sent to me actually. And yeah, so I just inked it a little bit using my, um, if you're not familiar, my distress ink. This one's not open yet, but that's, um, and then a little dauber, that's how you ink the things. And I wanted the chimney to be like the little pull tag on the tag. So I thought that was cute. And then this is a stamp that I got at the Goodwill Outlet Bins recently. And I just created a little door. This is a little piece of a measuring tape. And I just cut out 17 because that's the year that we moved to our home. And then that's a little snap. You can see the details there. So, And that is just something that was in, I don't even know. It's a little piece of like applique. I have no idea where I got it. So I originally didn't have this paper clip here. I was just doing like, this is called a belly band. I was just doing that, but it was kind of falling through. So I wanted to make sure I didn't lose my little house. So it says delight in the little things. Okay, then moving to the next page, I went more simple. I love this. This is actually stained. That came like that. This is from a package of, not package, I went to an estate sale and got a bunch of paper out of a box. And I got also a little organizer box and a cutting knife and they charged me $5 for everything. So I was like, perfect. And this package or, you know, chunk of paper that I got wound up being perfect for this journal because it has all things related to food, which is cool. Like a lot of old recipes and like advertisements. So I plan to just kind of weave those throughout the um, journal, especially the parts that are about food <laughs> and meal planning. So that's what that is. This is a pocket. If I decide I want to put a tag in there, I can. And then this, I, you know, created a page, like sometimes I create pages with a specific purpose. And so this, I really wanted to have a place where I can write some of our favorite meals, um, I didn't realize that that wasn't writable. Maybe I'll put a little blank sheet here because I want to be able to have a list like that's a longer list. This way, if I'm stuck for a meal, like if I'm if I'm looking at that blank page and I don't know what to plan, I can look at my list of favorites and get some ideas. And then, so this is a double pocket here. So you can see this is just like um, a piece of ephemera. I think it's from Craft. It was like one of their recipe things, but it says family reunion recipes, which I thought was perfect. And then I just kind of put this little uh, cluster here on the corner. And then it was kind of feeling flimsy. So I did use like a little um, manila card on the back just to strengthen that part of the pocket up. So this goes in this pocket. This goes in this pocket. This is just a coffee dyed note card, which I can, I thought, well, if I need more space, beyond this and I thought this was blank but it's not so I'll need to put maybe something I can write on there and then I can also go on to here if I need another place to write favorites okay and then this is just going to be weekly meal plans so that's all these are intended for and they just tuck behind these little bands um yeah kind of self-explanatory this I just thought was so cute it's a business card from days gone by. You can see the three digit area code isn't even listed. Foster, Forster Farm Market. I love the cow. So yeah, I just thought that was cute. And this is another piece of that clear paper. What did I, I didn't really pay attention to what this one said. I think it says today is a fresh start. Yeah, this says today is a fresh start. You can barely read it because it's on that clear paper, but you get the idea. Okay, so that's all that's going to be. And then this is a piece of that I pulled out from another uh, vintage stack of paper. And it says, gem of the day, 
The only time a woman really succeeds in changing a man is when he's a baby. <laughs> so I just think it's funny, you know, like some of the vintage stuff bashes on men or women in a way that is humorous. I would never say those things to my the men in my life, but I think they're funny to know that it was a part of our history. <laughs> okay. So this is what I'm currently working on. I'm, you know, I go back and forth between like busy, busy, and then more simple. This is just gonna stay here and I can write here if I want. I could, if I need to, I could add, um, you know, another card for meal planning. I mean, that's gonna be what this whole thing winds up being. So I can eventually like paper clip that in if I want. I could put a belly, belly band to hold more cards, but for now I'm just leaving it blank with the idea that, you know, you can always change a junk journal as you go. It's like never really finished. So what I'm going to show you now is something I like to do. I did it here for this pocket and I'm going to do it here for this pocket. But basically I am just creating a pocket with fabric, but you know, fabric is kind of flimsy. So what I like to do is make a fabric pocket, but it's like reinforced. I'm just going to set this aside. And so I use a note card. I was using the old fashioned note cards, but I don't really want to use them in that way. Um, and you just take your Mod Podge and a brush. This is my matte Mod Podge. I do have shiny Mod Podge, but I'm not a fan of it. And I like to use the matte Mod Podge. So I'm just going to Mod Podge this card And then I'm going to take my fabric, a uh, part that looks, that looks good to me. Let's see, I think I'll use, and this looks like it's kind of been edged. So I'm gonna keep that. Let's see, we can go on the other side of this. This is my glue mat, by the way. I recommend having one cutting mat that you just use for gluing. It just kind of protects your surfaces. I don't get my actual cutting mat, the one I use for cutting, all gluey. This is just from the Dollar Tree. So that's all I'm doing is Mod Podging this fabric onto this card. And then it creates a nice pocket for me that is reinforced. I'm always checking my corners. I wanna make sure the corners get stuck down really well. And then all I do is take my pinking shears and you don't have to, you could use a, a straight cut scissor too. Okay. All right. And then, oh, and also a little tip I have is that when I'm working on a junk journal, I keep all the things for that journal in a bin. This way, I'm because I like my journals to kind of be cohesive. I don't want to be constantly pulling out new papers. I mean, I might pull out some new ones as I go, but I keep all the scraps in here. This way I can use scraps from previous pages and kind of make it all be cohesive together. So you take your little pocket and uh, you can tell I'm not into matchy matchy. I don't mind if the fabrics are a little like, you know, different or if the paper doesn't really like matchy matchy, the fabric it just has to kind of jive together. I may cover some of the pink. Um, not because of this fabric, but just it's a lot of pink for me and I'm not going for pink in this journal. Like, I mean, I'm fine with pink, a little bit of pink, but I don't want a lot of pink. So, And that's all I did. So I used my Fabrifix, used this glue. I didn't do a good job showing you how I glued it down. But basically, I used the fabric fix, and I only put it here, 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 so that when it all dries, I'll have a nice little pocket here. And that's how I use make fabric pockets that are a little more, you know, supportive or uh, a little stiffer so that you can actually slide things in pretty easily. So let's think about how we can cover some of this pink because I'm not, I'm not feeling all that pink. In my bin of goodies, oh, maybe I could just cut a piece of coffee dyed paper and just kind of layer it there. That might be nice. And then that would just cover some of it. I probably should have done this before I did the pocket, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress. And so sometimes, you know, things get done in a funny order and that's okay. Maybe, yeah, that's kind of nice. 
kind of like that. And then maybe a piece of advertising. And then we just leave a little bit of the pink. I've been trying different glue sticks. And this one is one that I really like. The Scotch Permanent Glue Stick. I get it from Amazon. I'm sure they have them other places, but I'm not a fan of shopping if I don't have to. So, okay, now I'm gonna move my glue mat so I don't get glue all over the front cover. I'm going to stick this down. So I'm covering some of that pink up. I don't wanna go newspaper. I really like all these bits of old newspaper. Good morning. The newest invention is a candy bar with lettuce inside for women on a diet. <laughs> That's a hoot. That looks cute. And like this color here kind of goes with the pink and it goes with the green. See that? So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go for it. What's on the back? I always like to check, make sure I'm not gonna be upset if I cover it, but no, I'm not gonna be upset. That's a hamburger recipe. Hamburgers with olive relish. Now, while I think I would probably like that, my family, especially my hubby, He's not a fan of olives, so I'm okay covering that up. Okay. There we go. I'm just sticking it down. Great. Okay. So that, I like that. I like how that turned out. I like how this looks with this. We took care of some of the pink, I, and it kind of goes, you know, it, it jives with my flower stems, and I really am loving all the old newspaper. Okay, so that's all that I'm going to do right now. I'm gonna let this dry, do some other things, and I will show you more in a bit. All right, so I hope you liked seeing my junk journal and what I've been up to in it. I'll put one of these up every few weeks. Uh, again, I don't wanna have another channel. Not right now, anyway. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope it gave you some inside look into junk journaling, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.